Is this, can I ask, one, one of the HBO shows in development? Can you tell us about any of those, by the way? Blood Moon has wrapped something, hasn't I, it? I, I can't. Uh, Go on. <laughs> there's probably an HBO agent in the, <laughs> in the auditorium even now. Um, I can say, as I have said before, we, we started out with a number of different ideas, all of them prequels. Um, one show, uh, which I've been calling The Long Night, but HBO keeps saying it's not titled yet. So the show that's not called The Long Night uh, <laughs> yet has just finished uh, filming up in Belfast and is now in, in other places, not just Belfast, Italy as well. And uh, Jane Goldman is the writer and the showrunner on that. Uh, you, you've probably be, been familiar with her work. She uh, was the, the script writer on several of the um, X-Men movies. She did Kick-Ass, and she did the, um, the Kingsman, both Kingsman uh, things. She, she scripted Neil Gaiman's uh, Stardust. So she's a very experienced uh, screenwriter. <coughs> and she's done this story, and it is set, you know, 5,000 years in the past of Westeros, so way, way, way before the events of Game of Thrones. And that, that's the one that is uh, furthest along at the moment. And it's in pre-production, and right now it's just a pilot, but it, it's got uh, Naomi Watts in it, starring, it's got Miranda Richardson, a lot of other very uh, exciting actors, and uh, we'll probably be finding out in the next couple of months whether HBO is actually going to order full, the full series of that. That is very and exciting. meanwhile, we have two other pilots that are also in active development at some stage, and hopefully uh, in the near future, one or both of them will be uh, greenlit to shoot a pilot, and we may get more than one Westeros show on the air. Wow. The realm. Do you know what the realm is? It's the thousand blades of Aegon's enemies. A story we agree to tell each other over and over till we forget that it's a lie. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back for another Game of Thrones and a Song of Ice and Fire update video. In this video, I want to go over the new information we have regarding the original Game of Thrones successor show known as Blood Moon. We now have what looks like our first official images from the cancelled show. The new photos look like images from that infamous first episode. Now, for those of you who don't know or might not remember, Blood Moon was the first successor show to Game of Thrones. This was the show they wanted to make immediately after Game of Thrones' final season ended. Now, according to HBO's own website, the Blood Moon series would be set thousands of years before the events in Game of Thrones. The show would highlight what happened during Westeros' descent from the Golden Age of Heroes into its darkest hour during what would most likely be the first long night. And they said only one thing was for sure. From the horrifying secrets of Westeros' history, to the true origins of the White Walkers, the mysteries of the East, to the Starks of Legend, it's not the story we think we know. It sounds like this series would have shown us exactly what happened in Westeros thousands of years ago. It would have brought all of those incredible legends to life. Now, I don't know about all of you, but I was fascinated by this idea. And if you've been watching all of my videos over the years, then you know I was looking forward to this show the most. I was devastated after HBO made the announcement they were no longer moving forward with this show. Now, I'm sure some of you might be wondering why they stopped making the series. Well, according to their official announcement at the time, HBO's executives said it was a difficult show to make because there wasn't a whole lot of information written about what happened thousands of years ago. In fact, George R. R. Martin had only written eight lines worth of information about those events. He said the writers were left having to invent nearly all of the scenes. However, he also said although it was very hard to develop, there wasn't actually that many issues wrong with it. It wasn't unwatchable or horrible or anything like that. It was very well made and looked extraordinary but it did not take me to the same place as the original series. It was lacking the rich layers the original series had. Now, George R. R. Martin, who still hasn't seen the first episode, said it was a very difficult assignment. Most of the first episode revolved around a wedding of a southern house and a northern house, and it got into the whole history of the White Walkers. The show actually doesn't sound that bad based on what we've heard so far, but it must have been awful because HBO wasted nearly $35 million making its first and only episode. 
That's more than three times the amount they spent on Game of Thrones' first episode, which was roughly $10 million to make. I think there might be another reason why HBO was ready to walk away from a $35 million investment. According to a number of different sources, the Long Night series ran into some major issues when developing the Children of the Forest. Rather than making them look like the magical, leafy green figures from Game of Thrones, they went with black actors instead. In this new version of the story, they wanted to have a black race stand in as the indigenous inhabitants of Westeros, and it would be a curse that turns them all into the Children of the Forest. Meanwhile, all of the rich and noble families from Westeros would be white. Not only that, but it also says these black Children of the Forest would behave like barbarians. I think most of you should see how that would be an issue if all the whites are rich and noble, while the blacks are barbarics who are cursed. I'm not sure who thought that would be a great idea. Rather than fixing the issue, HBO must have thought it would be better to walk away from this $35 million disaster. After they did announce they were shutting down Blood Moon, they immediately followed that up with a new announcement that House of the Dragon was getting a full series order. So it wasn't all bad news on that day. Now I want to have a look at the new photos because it gives us our first glimpse of what this $35 million episode looked like. As you can see, we have Naomi Watts standing inside what seems to be Casterly Rock, the ancestral seat of House Lannister. Although Naomi Watts is a natural blonde, I always assumed she was going to be a member from House Stark. The description of the show made it sound like it would focus on the Starks of legend and the mysteries in the North. I guess I'd always assumed it would be similar to Game of Thrones, where they would have the lead actor or actress be the face of House Stark. Now I do wonder how she would fit into the show. We still don't know who her character was. She could be someone from the Casterlies, the Lannisters, or even Lan the Clever's mother or sibling. How would this fit into the origins of the White Walkers and the Children of the Forest? Now, George R. R. Martin said the first episode was going to focus on a wedding of a Southern House and a Northern House. I now wonder if they were going to marry someone from Casterly Rock and Winterfell. It would have been very interesting to learn how Stark and maybe House Lannister were wed thousands of years ago. We also have some new images of House Stark's men and boat. We have seen an image like this before back when they were filming the episode, but now we have a better look at the style of boats and uniforms. You can also see how Stark's sigil is slightly different from the one we have seen in Game of Thrones. Now, outside of this, we've also heard the show what introduced the Order of the Green Men. The Green Men are a sacred order who guard the Isle of Faces in the God's Eye. This does make sense considering there would be such a heavy focus on the Children of the Forest who also inhabit the Isle of Faces. This is another reason why I was so excited for the show. I've always been fascinated by the mystery surrounding the Order of the Green Men, the Isle of Faces, the Children of the Forest, and everything in the North. That's from House Stark's origins, the making of Winterfell and the Wall, the origins of the Night's Watch, the 13th Lord Commander, the Night's King, White Walkers, and everything else out beyond the Wall. This show really was right up my alley because it would have highlighted all the things I love most about A Song of Ice and Fire. All these new photos do is make me want to see the show even more, although I know it would have been a mess. The show basically would have had to stand on its own, since there's no source material from this moment in Westerosi history. Somehow, some way, I do hope they're able to explore this idea again. Now, I could always get the answers I want if George R. R. Martin would ever finish the damn story, but we all know the status on that. With all of that being said, leave me your thoughts down below. What do you think about these new photos? Do they make you want to see the show even more? Or are you glad they decided to move on to something else? I'd like to hear what you have to say. As always, I want to thank all of you for watching another video. I hope you all have a great day. I will see you again very soon. Bye.